It's that time at last, folks. Pedalbox has finally bought a pedal box. We spent a few weeks looking at pedal boxes and eventually settled on a top mount rather than a floor mount pedal box. When it arrived, we unboxed it, put it into the car and realised that it's not going to fit. Our brake cylinders want to be right here. So this is our brand new pedal box from OBP. It's from the Victory line of universal parts, which is great for something like this, where it doesn't, it's not designed to fit a particular car or particular floor pan or anything. It's all just flat, so we make up whatever brackets we need to fit it. We ordered this as a kit, so it actually includes all of the hydraulic cylinders that fit onto the back here, and a balance bar to give us front and rear brake bias adjustment, which is great for us because we don't really know what our balance is gonna have to be. We have not been sponsored on this one. We bought this with our own money as our own decision. However, I feel like we owe them a bit of a hat tip anyway. So when we ordered the wrong part and we needed to replace it, they let Adrian drive to the factory to get this one straight off the production line because that was the only way we could get one here in time for filming. Now the kit comes with a full set of hydraulic cylinders, reservoirs and a plate to mount them remotely, and a remote brake balance controller that we're probably gonna put on our dash somewhere. There's two main reasons that we can't use the normal Caterham pedal box. One, this brace we have coming from our floor sits up against the back of the cross brace here. That means that it can't sit and notch down nicely onto the back of it and be secured from there. And the other reason we can't use that is because if the pedals were there, I'd have to sit here in order to reach them, which is absolutely no use. Or to reach the steering column, since we've moved everything forward, I'd have to have my knees here, which is almost around my ears. So that's not gonna work. We're putting the pedal box in front of our cross member. Gives a little bit more room for things like my legs. But there is one other thing we need to take into account when building the structure to support it, and that is our fuel tank. Well, this isn't our fuel tank. This is the plan area of our fuel tank, which we need to position somewhere inside here that gives enough room for it, its outlets, and the pedal box to have enough room for our feet. So that's gonna be a bit tricky. This piece of cardboard represents the footprint of an eight gallon tank we're planning on using. It fits nicely around the rear mount of our suspension this way and doesn't encroach too far on the pedal box over here. It also fits this way and allows space for the outlet still on whichever side we want to put it on. We can put marks on here for each orientation of the tank and as long as we don't encroach on them, the tank's position won't be compromised by whatever we do with the pedal box. So we spent about two hours finagling this around trying to get a position that fits me and my clown feet and Chris and his not clown feet. And the important thing that we found relates to this cross member. Yeah, basically the issue we've got is even my regular size feet actually catch my toes on this cross member up here. So we're gonna have to move it, which is kind of annoying because we put it there in the first place. So we're now kind of undoing work, but yeah, whatever. Yeah. A lot of welding onto this section and putting these brackets in was to position this so that we could put the main support for the column in here. So actually taking this out and changing it isn't too much of a problem. Yeah, the important thing is we've actually still got the main column support out of the donor car. So we can just use that as a reference for whatever we build and basically everything's easy. Yeah. To build the bracket to hold the front of it, we're gonna use this 60 by 30 box and trim it down to be 25 mil high so it matches our, our cross member at the bottom and use the full 60 mil depth so that we can bolt into the front of the pedal box. We're pretty much gonna turn it into a shelf with little triangular supports underneath to stop it flexing. This fits onto the bottom of the chassis and the pedal box fits onto these four holes. We'll bolt this in place and then start working on the other mount to go along the front of the car at the other end of the pedal box. One. That is just about done for the day. We've welded in a piece of angle round here for the back stay and then joined them together and this will eventually form part of our tank support. But in the meantime, we're just going to spray a little bit of primer over it so it doesn't rust overnight because once again we've primed the car and then welded onto it more. Now that we've done a bit more fitting up of the pedal box here, it's time to get on with removing our cross brace. Now the only thing that determines how much of this we remove is where this vertical support section goes in. Now we've decided, completely arbitrarily, that it's going in at the end of the pedal box. It's not the middle of the car, it's just where the pedal box finishes up. So we're going to pop that in there in a minute, and then we're going to cut out all of the excess on this side. So that's that problem got rid of. Now we need to build a box that actually goes around the pedals. We're going to make it so it comes to the back edge of these two supports so we can weld both the front and back to give it a bit more strength because we're not going to build a frame around the box, at least we're not going to right now. We also need to build a frame 
to try and support this because there is still a bit of flex now we've taken off the front, which is what we found when we put this piece in. So the footwell itself is going to run down the inside edge of this chassis leg, across the front edge of this support, and then down the inside edge of this support here to come back to this edge. That way it sits nicely, it surrounds the pedal box, and it shouldn't be too big and get in the way of our fuel tank, which will go over here. After a good deal of cutting and bending, this is our driver's footwell. So this fits in around the back of the pedal box here, and it tucks in quite nicely, and it, it aligns with our platform here. We ended up shortening this down so it doesn't quite overlap this tube, but it does on this side. That's because we had to tuck this ever so slightly underneath this top tube because our tolerances are that close. We've still got all of this top section on because we're not sure exactly how we're going to fit it around the steering column when we put it back in. Now, there's one more thing that we have to take into account when building this bulkhead, and weirdly enough, that's our ECU. The ECU that came on our car is an M383. The higher brake units that were in the TT and other A3s for 180 to 125 brake use an ME7 ECU. That has a wideband lambda sensor, which is much, much better using bigger turbo. If we wanted to put a bigger turbo on this, then we need to use an ME7 ECU. Absolutely fine, apart from the fact that they run off a fly-by-wire throttle, and our car doesn't. So that means we need to make a few changes. We need to accommodate this box somewhere around our accelerator pedal in this footwell. And it's not quite as easy as it sounds. If we mount this higher up, similar to how it would have been in the Audis, we run into a problem of clearance because this rubber stop and indeed the back of the pedal comes into contact with the, the bulkhead itself. It pushes back, it bumps, and we'd have to cut into this anyway. If we're cutting into this in order to make this work, we might as well make a small box on the back that this sits into slightly further back. We cut the pedal off, we can mount the linkage from our existing floor-mounted pedal onto it, and then we have a fly-by-wire throttle operating off our existing pedal. But before we get onto building that box, we need to work out exactly where our steering column comes through and how much space we're going to have to fit that module in. Now that we've got the steering column in place, you might be thinking there's not a lot of room between it and the pedals. And you'd be completely right, there isn't much room between it and the pedals. In fact, by the time we've got one of Aid's clown shoes in here, you see that our feet aren't even much lower than the tops. So yeah, we've got to be pretty careful with how we build all this. There's a couple of things we can do now. Steering column is in so we can see, relative to this box section, which is where our bulkhead comes up to, we can tell where we need to notch out for the steering column to fit through the end of our footwell. Also, with the steering column in place, we can compare how well our throttle pedal fits in next to it. So thankfully, we've got quite a bit of room in there. We've got all the horizontal space that we need to fit that in. Now, the optimization problem we have is how much do we need to move our bulkhead forward to accommodate the pedal? We cut a notch out of our new sheet metal here and fitted the steering column so that we could clear and surround it, and then measured up the space needed for our electronic throttle pedal enclosure. After slightly modifying the firewall here, we put it back in the chassis and then cut out the last few panels that we needed to box it all in completely. It's looking pretty good, I think. We still need to prime it, but you know, we'll get to that later. For now though, we've been busy this morning with getting the master cylinders themselves bolted up. So we cut out a nice big 35 mil hole for the hydraulic barrels to fit through. And then from that, we referenced the main bolt holes that hold them in place. And now they hold the firewall onto the pedal box. The pedal box is bolted to the chassis, which means everything is now in place and we can start building the rest. Now to that end, a couple of small pieces of work going on now. So we've got this side panel on here that we're popping on the edge and that just brings the whole enclosure up to one common height that we can work up from. Next up we're building support for the steering column which is starting out as these two little stubs that are going to come up from the chassis and then we can come up and in and across to support on there. To make sure all the new metal we were putting in here was lined up correctly compared to the frame uprights that were already in place we put together this little clamping bracket to keep everything straight. Just pop some G-clamps over this and it keeps everything lined up perfectly. Now before we weld all this in permanently so we can't take it out ever again and I don't want to ever have to cut this out, we are going to finish the hoop that goes across here. Now it turns out when I fitted this in episode, I don't know, five, six, tell me in the comments, something like that, I actually did a pretty good job of getting this point to level with the underside of this point because these two pieces that are clamped on fit nicely and we have no high spot. We're going to put this across the top this way and get two little 45 degree infill pieces to go between here and here on this side. Now they're going to be cut at 45 degrees so it's going to be a bit of an octagon going across the top and it's going to make boxing the top of this in a lot easier. 
and the inside measurement from this point to this point, underside of here, is 64 mil, which we can use to triangulate and do the maths to get exactly the outside length that we want. This time on maths with Chris, Pythagorean theorem. Now we need to go up 64 mil plus 25 mil for our box section, and we need to come in across the same. So we take 64 plus 25 is 89, square that, double the result, and then finally we take the square root, which comes out at just over 125 mil. So now we can cut those pieces out and start the assembly. This pretty much took every clamp we owned to hold all the guides together, but after tacking it all in place, we could get rid of the scaffolding and then zap the whole thing together for real. So this is our completed support. It now doesn't allow this to move anywhere. It's rattling the whole car, so I think the, uh, the flex we had before is now all gone. It looks really nice. I'm, I'm really pleased with how this has come out. Um, it, it's nicely proportioned and it does the job excellently. However, it's going to look a lot better when the pedal box is actually installed, which fits back in here nicely. And we're gonna join all of this back up. Tack welder in, remove the master cylinders, remove the pedal box, get all of that back out, and then join the whole thing together so this doesn't come apart anymore. And now with the seats and the steering wheel all bolted back up into place, we can tell how much room we've got for our feet in here. Now there's not acres, but there is enough. And you can see from here, even aid silly clown feet have plenty of room to hit all the pedals. Well, that pretty much wraps up another fairly productive run for us here. We've got the firewall in, the pedal box is fitted, all of our hydraulic cylinders are on. There is a little bit of stuff we've got to tidy up though. We need to put a bracket on the top front here somewhere for our remote fluid reservoirs, which are gonna feed all of our hydraulic cylinders. And we need to replace this strip along the top of our box, which I managed to warp really, really badly when I welded this whole thing in, so we've just cut it out. It was unfixable. 